On Sunday morning near a small airport in New Jersey, two helicopters collided mid-air. One pilot was killed, the other critically injured. What really gets me about this accident is that it didn't involve bad weather, mechanical failure, or reckless flying. Instead, it just happened in the kind of everyday environment where most general aviation takes place. Now, let's see what we've known so far. This is William, and welcome to Black Box Analyst. Before talking about aircraft, pilots, or impact angles, it's important to understand the setting. This accident occurred near Hamilton Municipal Airport in southern New Jersey. Hamilton is a small general aviation airport, and like thousands of others across the country, it is non-towered. That term gets used a lot, and it's easy to gloss over what it really means. At a non-towered airport, there is no air traffic controller issuing clearances or separating aircraft. Instead, pilots manage traffic themselves. They announce their position, intentions, and movements over a shared radio frequency called the CTAF, the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. A useful way to think about it is like an intersection without traffic lights. Everyone follows the rules, everyone communicates their intentions, and everyone is responsible for seeing what others are doing and adjusting accordingly. Most of the time, this works extremely well. Thousands of non-towered airports operate safely every day, but the system depends entirely on shared awareness. There is no external safety net. Now add helicopters into that picture. Helicopters operate differently from fixed wing aircraft. They don't always use the same traffic patterns. They often fly lower. They may approach or depart from directions that fixed wing pilots don't expect. Their routing is more flexible, which is a strength, but it also adds complexity when multiple aircraft are operating in the same area. Near small airports, helicopters may transition through airspace that fixed wing aircraft assume is clear. Fixed wing aircraft may be focused on pattern work while helicopters are maneuvering below or alongside those patterns. None of that is inherently unsafe. In fact, it happens safely every single day, but it does mean that everyone is relying on shared awareness rather than formal separation. Everyone is trusting that what they hear on the radio matches what's actually happening outside the windshield. And that system works until it doesn't. So the takeaway here is not that non-towered airports are dangerous. They are not. The takeaway is that they rely almost entirely on coordination, communication, and visual awareness. There is no backup layer. There is no safety net beyond what the pilots provide themselves. When people hear about a mid-air collision, especially on a day with decent weather, the first reaction is often disbelief. How do two aircraft not see each other? The assumption is that clear weather equals easy visibility and easy visibility equals safety. That assumption is understandable and incomplete. Under visual flight rules or VFR, the primary method of collision avoidance is something called see and avoid. It sounds simple, look outside, see traffic, avoid it. But in practice, it's one of the most fragile systems in aviation. Human vision is not designed to detect small objects against complex backgrounds while moving at speed. Aircraft coming toward each other on a collision course don't appear to move much relative to the background. They just get bigger. That's known as the constant bearing illusion. And it means that the most dangerous traffic is often the hardest to detect until very late. Helicopters add another layer to that challenge. They have relatively small profiles. They can blend into terrain, trees, or buildings. Depending on angle and lighting, they can be almost invisible until they're close. Helicopter cockpits have their own visual limitations, structural components, rotor systems, and sight lines that can obscure certain sectors. Now add workload to the picture. Low altitude flight requires attention. There's navigation, radio communication, aircraft control, and traffic scanning, all happening at once. Even in routine operations, attention is divided. That doesn't mean anyone is careless, it means they're human. This is why mid-air collisions are rarely the result of a single bad decision. They are usually the result of multiple reasonable actions lining up in an unfortunate way. One aircraft slightly lower than expected, another slightly faster than anticipated, a radio call missed or misinterpreted, a visual scan that didn't quite catch the one thing that mattered most. Good visibility does not guarantee detection. It only means the environment allows detection, not that detection will happen. To me, this is one of the hardest truths in aviation to accept. We like to believe that if conditions are good, outcomes will be good. 
but aviation safety doesn't work that way. It's not about conditions alone. It's about how humans interact with those conditions. The point here is not that see and avoid doesn't work. It usually does, but it has limits. And those limits become especially important in environments where multiple aircraft are operating close together without formal separation. At this stage, the investigation is in its earliest phase. The NTSB will be the lead agency, and their job is not to assign blame, but to understand what happened and why. They will start by reconstructing the flight paths of both helicopters. That includes altitude, heading, speed, and timing. They'll look at relative geometry, how the aircraft were positioned in relation to each other just before the collision. That geometry often tells a very clear story. They'll examine wreckage and rotor systems for impact signatures. Rotor strikes, deformation patterns, and structural failures can help determine how the collision occurred and which parts of the aircraft made contact first. Radio communications will matter. Investigators will look at which frequencies were in use, what calls were made, and whether those calls were likely heard and understood. It's important to remember that correct radio calls can still be missed. Communication is a two-way process, and hearing is just as important as transmitting. Human factors will also be part of the picture. That includes pilot experience, recent flight activity, familiarity with the area, and workload at the time of the accident. This is not about judging skill or intent. It's about understanding context. One thing people often expect immediately is a clean flight track from ADS-B data. In this case, that data may be limited. Many light helicopters do not continuously broadcast ADS-B out, or they may appear intermittently. That doesn't stop an investigation, but it does mean investigators rely more heavily on radar, witness accounts, and physical evidence. What we cannot responsibly conclude right now is why the collision occurred. We don't know who saw what, who heard what, or how much time either pilot had to react. Any statement that claims to answer those questions at this point is speculation. And speculation doesn't make aviation safer. So, I think it's important to slow down here. Early analysis is not about solving the accident. It's about understanding the system the accident occurred in and recognizing where risks live in everyday operations. At the end of the day, this accident didn't happen because aviation is unsafe. It didn't happen because someone woke up intending to make a bad decision. It happened in a normal place, on a normal day, during normal operations. And that's exactly why it deserves careful attention. Flight safety is usually lost in the most ordinary moments, when everything feels normal, when nothing seems urgent, and when attention naturally relaxes. As more information becomes available, the details will get clearer. Until then, the most useful thing we can do is understand the environment, respect its limitations, and remember that routine flying still demands deliberate awareness. Thank you for watching. I'll come back to this when more details emerge. Fly safe, and I'll see you in the next video.